Well, that could be said for Lindsay Lohan, same with Mel, Mel Gibson for his anti-Semitic rants, and the same with Pee Wee Herman, arrested twice, second time for indecent exposure. But is it really indecent exposure if your penis is actually inside the popcorn bucket, Ken? <laughs> uh, depends how big the popcorn bucket is. Well, what happens if it's a large popcorn and the popcorn starts flying everywhere? Good point. I think that's probably inappropriate no matter where you are. All right. So now we can add Islanders forward Trevor Gillies to that list. Just doesn't learn his lesson. Comes back from a nine-game suspension and takes another suspension, this time ten games. Hey, well, Does this guy have a place in the game today? Well, let's, let's back up here. He didn't learn his lesson. Can you describe to me what Gillies' role is on the team? Well, his role is to play physical. It's clearly physical. the role that Gar Snow wants him to play. Is his role to skate around out there and not protect the team, or is it to protect the team and stand up when something happens? How can you say that that's protecting the team? Did did what would you do and hit? Let, let's put let's let's think about this scenario. There's five guys in the minors right now. Okay, Gillies fought for about six years to get to the Islanders organization. He realizes what he has to do. He's going to get one or two shifts a game. Do you think he's concerned about going out and scoring a goal? Absolutely not. Uh, I think he should be concerned with not putting his team down shorthanded for five minutes at a time. That's something pretty big if you want to count about, you want to talk about plus and minuses. He's done a lot more on the minus side than he has on the plus side. And right now, I don't know how anyone can say that this guy has a place in the game. He can't even skate. Now, do you think he can skate? He's, he's got a contract. I don't know if you got one right now. Well, okay. Let me ask you a question. How many games do you think, how many goals does he score? In, in all of his years of pro hockey, how many goals do you think he scored? He's probably scored. How many years pro has he played? Six goals. 571 six goals. some odd games okay. or something. You, and he scored six times. Like, Does that not say that the guy goals? just can't play the game? Do you think he's there to score goals? No, okay. he's not. But I don't think he's there to play so physical he puts his team shorthanded for five minutes at a time. Do you think Garth Snow is sticking up for him in the media because he, you feel he's doing something wrong? No, I think Garth Snow lost his, his mind. Role. His role is to stand up for the team. He's going to get two shifts a game. He is the police. When he sees something going wrong, it's unfortunate, the calls he's been getting, but he has no choice but to step up to the plate. Clutterbuck, kid runs around with his head cut off, hammers one of his players, potentially injured his player. Does he let it go? He lets it go. He comes in the room. Garth Snow says, what are you doing, kid? I'm paying you to play here to protect the team. A guy gets hit right in front of you. And you do nothing about it. What does that Doesn't that mean you should fight him instead of hitting him from behind? You get five minutes each for fighting. You don't get five minutes each for one guy boarding the other guy. Well, I think that calls a little extremist, too, because of who it was. I mean, they showed some replays of some of the hits back in the day. And I think it was it was a call the league felt they had to make because no big deal. No one's going to miss him if he's not in the game. We already gave him 10. We're going to send another message to the hockey world that we're not going to tolerate. I think it's bullshit that they give him nine games. They did because who he was, and it's unfortunate. I think it's bullshit he didn't get the entire season, and I think that the Islanders organization should have been fine. I mean, you played in that organization. You know what they expect. What was it like for you when you played in the minors? Absolutely. What, I was in the minors. Uh, I got called up. I knew I had a chance. I got into 18 fights in 18 games. I had Milbury there. I actually had a point where you were getting fined every game. The team was okay with that because of the fact you're doing your job. You know, you, you're sticking up for the team. You're protecting your so-called star players that they apparently don't have any, but the reality is his role is his role. It's unfortunate that he's got to take the hits he does, but that's the reality of the game. Okay, so when you were in the minors, you were obviously there with some young guys with some skill. What do yep. you think is going on today with, with, I think it's Bridgeport, what's going on today with the young guys that say, hey, I want to play based on my skill. I want to get a chance because I can score. But this moron gets a chance because he's going to come up and run someone's head into the glass. What kind of a message does that send? Well, that's just a reality. That's a role in the game that's always going to be a position. And, you know, most guys are skilled in the minors uh, as opposed to getting called to play the role. So they look at that. They know that the, you think the goal, goal scorers want to play Gilly's role? Not a chance. There may be one or two other guys that are down in the minors. I played in St. John's Newfoundland. We had about six guys that could fight. And we were always like, you want to be that next guy that gets called up for the fight. You know, when, you know when an injury goes down, 
uh, when I was with the Leafs, I got called up. Uh, you know, Domi was out. Uh, I got called up to play. I knew my role was. My role wasn't called up to score goals. My role is because they were looking for some toughness in the lineup. So the toughness doesn't mean me skating around the ice with my hands in my pocket. That means me skating around with my gloves off, looking for somebody to send a message. Yep, but you say toughness, and you also say fighting in the same sentence. So that's totally different than what this moron is doing. He's not really playing anything that and he's not really doing anything that no guy in the minors couldn't do i want to see a guy like that go out there and play physical if he's going to cross the line stay close to the line if you're going to cross it don't do something so stupid that when you get called into colin campbell's office from basically being there two weeks before he says what the hell are you doing here why are you here again i just i cannot stand that this guy has a place in the game today you how you even you could score in junior hockey could you not I used to score at will. I used to score in the minors at will. I never wanted to score in the NHL because I was I had more better seats on the bench watching the game. But obviously this is why Gar Snow is sitting where he is today and you're sitting where you are today because he feels that Gilly's just doing a good job. He's doing stand up for his players, he's doing the right thing. Well I'll tell you what, if I was in Gar Snow's position right now, the Islanders would not be any worse than they are as they are right now. Well, you could also say if Gar Snow had more balls, he'd probably not dress guys like him. If, if is the biggest word. We can debate all day long on it. So he's eligible to come back in 10 games against the Thrashers on March 24th. When he does come back, what do you think guys in the opposing team's locker rooms are going to be saying about this guy? Nothing. Everyone understands it's part of the game. I mean, no one looks at him like, I can't believe you got suspended again. Every play, every top guy in every team would have done the exact same thing he done. It's unfortunate with the rival thing with the Pittsburgh. Yeah, he got 10 games. The call was ridiculous, no matter what anybody says. He was going on a shoulder hit because he's a lot stronger than Clutterbuck is a little shithead. Hits him, hurts him, doesn't hurt him. He gets up, he gets 10 games because of the size of him. How do you make a call upon size? I think it's ridiculous. So I, I don't think you ever make room, calls based upon size. And I heard someone definitely. say something so stupid the other day. They said, if you got a guy who's six foot eight, hit a guy who's five foot ten, sometimes he hits him with his hip and he, he'll hit him in the head. That's not true. Let me ask you, how many times have you seen... Okay, you played with Hal Gill. How many times did you see Hal Gill hit someone in the head because of his size? Every time he made a breakout pass, he used to hit someone in the head to puck. <laughs> I've seen every practice. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about in a game with his shoulder? How many times did he hit someone in the shoulder? Well, he, how, I mean, if you know Hal Gill, he's not a very physical player, so um, it's, it's kind of... Uh, the reality is... If the guy's got six inches on a guy, his elbows are going to be at his head. I believe I believe that Gillies was coming in to finish his check. He had too much energy going forward. Elbows slid right up, and he hit he hit Clutterbuck. I mean, it looked it looked worse than it was. But you want to get oh, back? Oh, it to did guys. not look worse than it was. There was one angle that was shot from the stands. It was it was it was brutal. He basically yeah, jumped stand, into his head, head with his elbows. You know what skill does that take? If you're a player. You know, you were obviously a skilled fighter. You weren't a skilled hockey player, but you were skilled at what you did. This guy's clearly not skilled at what he does, so he has to do stuff like this. But why would it? Why would it be a place for him on any team's bench? Uh, did you? Uh, I just want to refrain the fact that the not skilled hockey players. Wondering if you could uh, email me a copy of your first contract. My first contract? Well, I haven't been yeah. offered one yet. Oh, you haven't been offered one yet. Yeah. So how do you know oh, what I'm okay. capable of doing? When you get your first contract from the NHL, shoot it off to me. I want to look for it. Oh, no, that, hold on. It says Gretzky and Iserman right behind you. Two Hall of Famers, right? Yes, sir. Is there yes, a Hall sir. of Fame Ken Belanger jersey behind? There is. Uh, actually, uh, last year I got inducted to the uh, Sault Ste. Marie Hockey Hall of Fame. So there is uh, There's a letter somewhere. De Belanger defies the odds. Uh, who else is in there? Is Paul Maurice in there? Paul Maurice is in there. Uh, Phil Esposito. Is Ted Nolan in there? Ted Nolan's in there, Tony Esposito, Phil, Tony, Mike Zook. Oh, and Ken So when, they, when someone says, I go, I'm, I'm in Sault Ste. Marie, what should I do? They say, hey, go check out the Sault Ste. Marie Hockey Hall of Fame. In there is Tony Esposito, Phil Esposito, and Ken, Ken Belanger. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But, definitely. It's great, great but in you the don't middle. But you don't have tickets to the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto where, where those two guys are actually residing, right? Uh, not yet. We're working on that. Okay, let's move on. I want to ask you about Bruce, Bruce Boudreaux. Last night, uh, sorry, a few nights ago, he said, if I'm a ref, I would never make a call on Downey. He dies every two seconds. Stamkos, 
He also dives every two seconds, end quote. Does a coach really have a place saying this? No. I, uh, he's, he, he doesn't have a place saying it because the reality is there's nothing worse than somebody chirping who doesn't get on the ice. So a guy chirping like that, his mindset is to create some animosity, adversity before the game, get the media stirred up, get, the, get those guys thinking, try and get them off their game with the stupid chirp. Maybe make it more aware attention for the refs to notice if they do dive, if they are diving, because now it's a media. So that he just brought it to light that he feels that they're divers. Do you think they're divers? No, I don't think they're divers. I, I just think the reality of the game is that guys play hard and some guys are stronger than us. Some guys are weaker skaters. So what he's trying to do is he's basically trying to get the refs on his side. Correct. I just think he's trying to make it well public knowledge, right? He the way he feels. So what better way to get your message out there than go to the media? You can't get when you were in Boston with Joe Thornton. Who who's your was it? Mike O'Connell was coaching you. Uh, Pat Burns and Mike Keenan. Burnsy, who's Burnsy. actually at the Burns the uh, the Pat Burns charity event earlier this week, who was put on by Mike Keenan. But yes. do you guys like that ever say anything about about opposing teams' players to the media? No, I think Bernsey was famous, uh, you know, always uh, flexing the muscle. Uh, you know, uh, I was in the bench a few games, you know, who was it against? Uh, he, he wanted, he, I got into a fight and I beat their guy up and he's flexing his muscle. And he, he got used to get so emotional into it, but he wouldn't make media out first. But let's not forget the game has changed over the last 10 years with the media, uh, with the, all the tweets and all the, you know, the Facebook, YouTubes. So a guy says one word and what is a, what is a sort of a local media uh, interview turns into a global media interview in seconds. So uh, the media is a lot quicker, faster, and more exposure for, you know, interviews for coaches as well. Personally, I, I really had no problem with what he was saying. If he actually believes that those guys are divers, then what's the problem? Like, why is it so against the code for guys to say about, talk about what actually goes on and say things that are the truth? Why is it so against the code? Well, you know, the, re the reality is because the guy's behind the bench. If he's got the gear on, and, that, and that's, that's where dis your disrespect in the game, is that if you're going to chirp, step up to the plate. If you, you know, you, you're going to throw fuel in the fire, you better be able to put it out. And the reality is a coach can't put it out. He'll send somebody else to put it out. So guys don't respect that much. But, you know, Boudreaux played the game. He knows the game. And I just think he's trying to get, you know, the media get in those guys' kitchen. It was, you know, did it work? Hey, they won the game last night. You said – throw guys out on the ice who will do it for him. Were you ever that guy? Uh, I was that guy, definitely. Give me an example. Give you an example. Well, uh, what type of example? One example where I was actually thrown onto oh. the ice. Every, every game I played, uh, wherever there was a bad – actually, I'll give you an example. We were at, uh, in the Boston Bruins playing in Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, Ty Domi come across the ice and absolutely crushed – uh, Sean Bates, he, Domi gets a two-minute interference penalty. Next shift, obviously, I'm out there. Bernsey puts me out there, and so I have to do something. I'm out to draw against Gary Roberts. Robs, he doesn't really want to fight, but the reality is I was going after him no matter what, and that's it. I got he, – he knew it was coming, and he didn't have a choice. And so – What happened you know, in that fight? Well, uh, I think I uh, it was a mediocre fight. I obviously beat him up, and then I uh, got kicked out of the game for instigating. Okay. Now, did that ever stop Domi from doing anything ever again? No, but what it does is cross-send a message that you're going to well, hit one What the hell guys. good does that do if it doesn't actually stop him from doing things ever again? What difference well, does you it gotta make? Send, you're sending a message to the team. If you're going to take our guys out, we're going to take your guys out. If you want to play Okay, what way, happened? Like, what happened in that game? Uh, we obviously, I think we lost probably four or five one. Okay, so you guys lost four one, and Domi gets to hit Sean Bates, and you go out and fight Gary Roberts. Doesn't that kind of say there's this whole there's a whole confusion of what should happen? Why don't you go out there and grab Domi and beat him up? I already beat him up about six times. It was kind of boring punching him. It was kind of not. I had enough mud ice my hands after every time I fought him. So every time you fought him, did you guys lose? Uh. No, actually, Toronto was losing at one time, and we were in warm-up, and it was in Boston. I could tell Domi wanted a great-up warm-up. I actually got a photo of it, and he's he's got his game face on, just staring at me the whole warm-up. I'm like, I, 
I know he's coming. And I think Toronto's having it. They're having a tough time in the media. And so their first road trip, obviously, into Boston, I knew it was coming. So, uh, you know, we used to fight beginning of the game. Depends on, you know, the scenarios of what happened in the game before. Uh, was it, were they winning or losing? Well, the problem is that the Leafs obviously won that game, didn't they? 5-1, you said? Oh, that was the game before they won that game. Oh, okay. My bad. All right. Let's move on. I want to ask you something today. I'm going to try something new. It's called Back in the Day. Back in the Day, Aaron Ward playing for the Boston Bruins, Scott Walker playing for the Carolina Hurricanes. 2009 playoffs, Scott Walker sucker punches Aaron Ward, drops him, and eventually goes on to score the series winner in overtime. And then in the offseason, Aaron Ward signs in Carolina to be teammates with Scott Walker. What was it like for those two guys the first time they walked in the room and met each other? I think their wives would probably had more of an issue than them. Uh, guys, whatever. It's part of the game. They would have shaken it off and, hey, what's up? And uh, maybe 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 he may have apologized for, for for that. But other than that, it was no big deal. Like I said, I think the, the wives may would have had a harder time in the wives' room to get over it than the guys. It's part of the game. No big deal. Did your wife ever have problems in the wives' room? She never had a problem. She always stayed perimeter. Did, did anyone that you know have problems in that room? In the wives' room? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. That's really sacred territory. I never really spent much time in there. Well, when you're a healthy scratch, you couldn't, you couldn't walk down there and say hi? When I was a healthy scratch, I yeah. was up in the press box eating popcorn. It, I heard a story about a guy who uh, he actually watched the game from the stands in an arena, and he was a healthy scratch. I, I believe it was in Phoenix. No one knew who he was. No. Oh, yeah, I, be I believe that. Could anyone have ever done that with you? Could you have ever gone down, watched the game from the stands, and no one would have known who you were? Uh, depends where you play. If you if it was in the, like, uh, you know, the the southern cities, no one cares about who you are. People are at the game; they don't know the players. There's no media exposure, so um, I've seen. Uh, you know, I've been in games. Whoa, 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 hold on! Stop! 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 Did you just say I seen? I seen games. Now, hold on okay. a second. I've seen you're not, games. Hold on, That's you're bad. not only you're not only a tough guy. You're a GM, but now you're a, an English major. All no, no, I'm just thing? I'm just not an idiot. That's what I am. So, okay, <laughs> carry on. I like it. I'm not an idiot. I'm everything except an idiot. Yes, that's me. Keep going. Right. I, I want to hear your story. All right, what story? Well, I said, could you watch a game from the stands? Yeah, you know what? You could. In you're, I mean. Living in the Canadian markets, impossible. But anywhere out, you know, in the southern markets, no problem whatsoever. Because there's probably empty seats everywhere, so it's not a big deal. Definitely. True. You got anything for me today? I do. I have, uh, you know, a couple questions here uh, for you. All right. Just let's prove. Here. Let's prove that I know the game as well as you. All right. Uh, the, uh, the Fat Club in training camp. Do you know what the Fat Club is? And do you and do you think you qualify to get in there before you get, you tell me what it is? Well, I want to guess the Fat Club, where, wherever it is, it will involve Kyle Wildwood. All right, Fat Club. Oh, Anyone over it's 10 percent? The Fat body Club. Fat. I know what it is. I know what it is. It's when you show up to training camp, anything over 10 percent body fat. All right. Would you qualify? I probably would club? qualify because I'm at 12. Nice. Well, you're close. What are you at today? Um, I, okay. If you played the game, what would you? Oh, hold on, be? hold on. We're not done with this question. What 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 percentage are you at today? Oh, well, me. Yeah. Probably about ten and ten and three quarters. Ten and three quarters. That is <laughs> you know BS. If they I'm took probably... those, if they took those things and grabbed something, they need to back up and 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 grab some more. You know what? I'm probably uh, I haven't worked out in about six years, so but I'm still <laughs> lean. I'm still lean, and uh, I've only put about ten pounds on, so I'm probably about fifteen percent body fat. But I, you know, I'm feeling yours to get back and start training again. All right. Keep going. Fire away. Um, if you played the game, you talk a big game. You, you seem to know everything. So what? I, I'm just curious of what type of player you would be on the ice. Who would you? Would have been a goal scorer. To? No, actually, you know what? I would have been Gary Roberts. Scorer. Yeah, what I would have been Gary scorer? Roberts. One what of my favorite scorer? players of all time. Played the game physical. He would always back up his teammates, and he could score. That's who I would have been. All right. Uh, a black ace. What? Can you give me the terminology? What is a black ace? 
in the playoffs when a guy uh, guy gets called up or six spots and none of those guys play. Those are the guys who don't play in the playoffs. Good, that's fair. Now those guys. You were a black ace good. many times, weren't you? I was a black ace many times, and you know what? It's uh, it's an easy job in the playoffs because you you, you get bag skate during the day. You know what a bag skate is? Yeah, I, I know what a bag skate is. All right. It is. Oh, a bag skate is when your coach just puts you through an absolute terrible workout because you played like crap the night before. I'll give you a bag skate story. That to, to, I was on New York Islanders, the Vice yep. Islanders. Mike Milbury, uh, as the Milbury is on TV these days, uh, full of everything except for knowledge. Um, <laughs> we were playing the Islanders. I was in the fat club, okay? 11% yep. body fat, 1% over. I have 230 pounds. I'm 11%. Then we got Ziggy Palpy, who is 130 pounds, and he's at 10%, but that's okay because I'm in the fat club. So so anyways, he decides to uh, skate me. So during the game day, any guys who stay on the ice extra from the coaches aren't in the game that night, so they got to get an extra workout in. So I'm doing my extra workout. We're doing we're skating the walls. We're doing walls. You know what wallies are? No, I don't. Okay, wallies are when you, all the guys line up on the sideboards and go over and back. All right. Oh, yeah, there so and just red line, blue line, red line, blue line. No, side to side, side to side. So okay. now they can go up to 10 and down, right? So you go one yep. across is one, there and back is one, two. Anyways, everyone's doing it, but doesn't Mike say to you, hey, you grab the net, you push the net doing this. Is it to right. you? To me, yeah, yeah. So I, so I got the net. I'm pushing the net in snow, doing the wallies. Everyone else is just skating. All right, no big deal. I grind it out, I do it. We skate for an hour. We get off yep. the ice. We have an out. We have an hour workout. All the yep. other guys. All right. Obviously, I'm not playing. So doesn't uh, at two o'clock. I go to the mall. I go buy a new dress shirt. I get <laughs> home at I get home at quarter four. Joey McMahon, the trainer for the Islanders at the time, calls me and says, "Where are you?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Your jersey's hanging up. You're playing tonight." I'm like, "You got <laughs> kidding me? I didn't eat all day. Didn't sleep." And we were playing the Rangers. Lo and behold, Darren Langdon, longest fighter in the league. Yeah. I, 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 you got to kid me. So I raced down the rink. I get there. I uh, just missed the team meeting, but he didn't realize I wasn't even there. And I get him. <laughs> he probably up. didn't know who you were. He did know. He knew, he knew I was the guy pushing the net. I get one shift against Darren Langdon, get into a fight with him. It was about yep. a five minute fight. Never got one shift the rest of the game. Did he get a paycheck at the end of the month? That was training camp, so I never even got paid for that. Wow, that's the worst thing. So wow. there's my uh, you, there's my. Story. Did you have a roster spot? I did have a roster spot because you know why? Because I went that out fight. there and got I went out there and got into a fight. Like Mr. Right. Gillies, keep his spot. Well, how about but, this? Keep fighting like this. Next week we'll have another show. How about that? I like it. I'm ready. I, right, I, might even, uh, I may even hit. I may even hit the bike. I'm ready for next week. Feeling good. All right, sounds good. It'll be the first time in six years. <laughs> first time in six years. All, All right, we're gonna go for Ken Belanger, Dave Turner on the other end. I'm Corey Landsberg. We'll be back next week. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to